Hi, everyone. Welcome to Feed Your Soul, brought to you by Aish and Julish. I am Jamie Geller, your host for this evening, oh, or morning, or afternoon, depending it is wherever it is that you are tuning in from. I love when you say hey. I love when you tell us where you're watching from. I am in the outskirts, the suburbs of Jerusalem, Beit Shemesh. Um, it was a little chillier today, mid-December, almost mid-December, but yesterday was 71 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're really enjoying the uh, Israeli weather as we gear up for Hanukkah. Let me know what's going on. I was talking to some people in the Northeast, in the States the other day, and they said it was snowing. So I love how we all come together from all over the world to talk about food, to talk about Jewish food, traditions, customs, and holidays. So we are on like the eve, the precipice. I mean, I've been frying already for like two weeks for Hanukkah. I always say this is the season when I feel like, you know, I smell like I just got off a shift at McDonald's. So, but that's par for the course. Um, one of my favorite holidays. I love it because it's so long. I, it feels so festive. I love the light in the darkness of winter um, during these like early nights when the sun sets. I love the gifts. I love the family time. Um, and it's just so it's like something relaxing about this time. It's not that same kind of intensity and urgency um, that you had before. Let's call it Rosh Hashanah or Passover, uh, the Jewish New Year or Passover, as I just mentioned. So Hanukkah is really special to me. I would love to know your favorite Jewish holiday. And we are going to celebrate the Hanukkah is almost coming up with this like ingenious recipe um, from a wonderful new friend of mine, Faith Kramer. I'm going to tell you all about her in a second. But she's making challah fritters. And the variation on this is like a challah jam fritter. And this is going to be, I believe, the easiest, most genius hack to jelly donuts ever. Faith and I were talking before the show about people's fear of yeast. Um, and that's real people. I mean, I know it's real. I mean, I even have it sometimes and I'm always proofing my yeast, even when it's like instant active, just because like I'm so nervous. So I'm, I'm super psyched. And I always have like dribs and drabs of leftover challah. So I'm super psyched to see how she does this. I saw someone was saying, hey, from Cleveland. Good to see you. Um, and just like Michael, our producer, will pop up the names of who's watching, where you're watching from, what your favorite holiday is and what you want to see us cook next. Hi, Christy. Shalom. How are you? Uh, hi, Leora. How are you? I feel like, Leora, you're like a regular. I've, you know, I remember seeing you a lot. Beth Lee, Shalom, how are you? Guys, what about Happy Hanukkah? Like, it's happy almost Hanukkah. How about we greet each other with that wonderful, um, not just peace, but peace and blessings for happy, light, bright year. All right, let me tell you a little bit about Faith, our wonderful, incredible guest today. And like I said, my new friend from California. So Faith Kramer is a food writer and recipe de developer concentrating on the foodways, history, and customs of the Jewish diaspora. She has written hundreds of posts on her website about Jewish customs and food, travel, and global ingredients with accompanying recipes, which can be found at faithkramer.com. As a columnist for the J, the Jewish News of Northern California, she writes articles twice a month on food and cooking, along with original recipes. Faith lives with her family in the San Francisco Bay Area. Her new book is 52 Shabbats, Friday Night Dinners, inspired by a global Jewish kitchen. Faith, welcome to Feed Your Soul. Oh, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. And uh, I, it's just an honor to be on with you, Jamie. Faith, I feel the same way. Uh, tell me <laughs> first, before we get into the details, what's the weather like in uh, sunny California? Is it sunny? Well, we're in Northern California and it looks like it's, you know, it's just nine o'clock here. It looks like it's going to be sunny today, but a few days ago it was rainy and, you know, cold for us. I know it's not cold. Some people would say, <laughs> oh, that's not cold, but it is cold for what we're used to. Um, but usually we have a pretty good winter and we need the rain. We really need the rain. Yeah. We're praying for rain too here in Israel. It is the time and it is the season. It's also the season of the Festival of Lights. It's Hanukkah. This is your book. It's the, your book's one year anniversary, as you told me, but it's first Hanukkah, correct? That's right. It was caught up in the supply chain issues and it was um, in a container ship off the coast of Long Beach for about four weeks. So we totally missed Hanukkah. Hanukkah was early last year. As, you know, as uh, Hanukkah is always the same time. I don't know why we say Hanukkah is early, Hanukkah is late, <laughs> totally. but it was early last year time. So we just, we totally missed it, but it was still, uh, um, 
it was still, uh, you know, it, it still got a great response. And I was able to share a lot of the recipes before the book came out. So people were able to use some of the recipes for Hanukkah. So that made me feel good. That's really special. You know, our editor at Julish, Tamar Genger, loves the book, loves the idea. I think it's super, super great. I want to like see one of these signature Hanukkah recipes, the challah fritters, Faith. I'm like dying to see how you make this. I feel like it's so smart. So I don't know. So you've got the photo up of the Hanukkah fritters and I have a plate full of them here. And you can see um, there's a couple ways to serve them. One is with just Open up a see, jar. Hold the plate up a little closer. Okay, I love that. So we can see beautiful. Love it. Okay, again. So, so um, one of the ways to serve it is with a commercial or homemade warm hot fudge sauce, and the other is with the sweet tahini sauce we'll be making today. And or some people just skip the dip and and go naked or with just powdered sugar and <laughs> cinnamon sugar. That, that feels so risque. Let Let's see it. How do we make the basics? Um, okay, so for the uh, for the recipe, we start with um, a pound loaf, which is usually how they're sold, or you know mm -hmm. you might have to weigh it if you do help, but you can make less. I've made it with as little as four ounces of hala, um, okay. and then you just need to divide everything by a quarter. If you have leftover hala, it's perfect, and you just um, shred it like this. I love yeah. that when you're saying shredding the challah, like I hadn't thought about it when I made like a challah bread pudding or a challah kugel, I've always cubed it, but I love just ripping these shreds. It's so much easier. Uh, well, I think that it takes a little bit longer, but it gives you, it gives everything a little bit of an edge to kind of glom onto and it gives uh -huh. texture to the final, to the final. Um, and if you don't have challah, you could do brioche. I, I think you could do a soft white bread We'd probably need to cut back on the liquid. I haven't tested it, but um, mm -hmm. there's a great, I have a recipe in my book for hollow that's made by the three-year-olds in our temple preschool. And I figure if oh. the three-year-olds can do it, anybody can make this recipe. Yes. <laughs> We're getting so many hellos. I think we get people from Michigan. Um, I saw Lisa coming on before. So hi to everyone. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. I know some of you that's are so. Faith's friends. So that's good. Oh, that looks great, Faith. So just the bowl. So that's I'm literally that's, torn. Oh, right. Faith, I have to and give right. a shout out to my mom. My mom is watching. Can you say hi to Goldie, Faith? Hi, Goldie. Hi, Jamie's mom. It's a <laughs> pleasure to kind of meet you. Here. So now we're going to get the batter ready. And the batter is going to be four beaten eggs. Okay. Great. And then, and then it's got a cup of jam. I like a berry jam. I like a seedless jam. This is strawberry jam, but you could play with the flavors and change up, change them up, um, you know, to whatever you want. I mean, if you've made some homemade cranberry jam or something seasonal like that, I mean, it would be great. And then, we this have is so unique to me, Faith, because very classic in Israel, the sufganiya, which is how you, the donut in Israel, is a filled jelly donut. And of course, now they do right. tons of different fillings. So you're putting this all into the one bite. You don't need to pipe in jelly right. at the end, correct? So, right. And this is a cup of milk. And if you need to make this parv or non-dairy, mm -hmm. just use a non-dairy milk. Um, you know, and then kind of pick a milk that goes with your, if you're using a seedless raspberry, raspberry jam, I think almond milk would be great. If you're using Delicious. a tropical fruit jam, maybe coconut milk. Um, oh, I, Faith, yeah. I love that tip. Love it. Yeah. So then we're just kind of breaking up the jelly here. Okay. So it kind of all mixes, but that's it. Those are, that's it. And then the bread. So that is And it. a bowl and a spatula and the challah. I, I, I feel I like this is... This is good for the three-year-olds also, you know? <laughs> except, except for maybe the frying part. I don't know about the okay. frying part. Okay, so then we'll have so the adult then, supervision. Right. So then you just mix this all in. Now, um, if I was doing this not on camera with Jamie Geller, yay, <laughs> um, I would, um, after I mixed it, I would put it in the refrigerator for 20 minutes before okay. I shaped and, and fried them. Um, but we're not going to wait that long, but we will make our sweet tahini sauce to give it a chance to kind that's of absorb smart. all the liquid. And, okay, so that's um, what, so I was going to say, what's the purpose of that? It's just so that we have no liquid left in the bowl? So the bread has just totally absorbed the, the, the mixture. Um, okay. And you know, if you're using stale bread, you know, this is a great use for stale bread 
maybe let it, you know, you might need a, a few minutes more, but it is especially important if you're doing the variation in the book with the mashed banana and the spices, it really okay. needs that time to soak it up. The jam variation is a little more forgiving. So you want to mix that all up. One thing I want to just say I love about your book is that there's so many substitutions and variations you've really allowed, accommodated for flavor profiles that people might prefer or different diets and lifestyles. Uh, was that really important to you? That was incredibly important. And I got in trouble with my editor. She kept saying, stop giving <laughs> variations. Uh, Amy, Amy says, stop giving variations. This is going to be a 500 page book and no one can afford <laughs> to buy it. So That's really funny. So just a reminder to everyone, I'll have Michael throw up the um, cover 52 Shabbats, Friday night dinners inspired by a global Jewish kitchen is Faith's new book. It's really special. It's incredible. It's got main dishes, plus of over 50 main dishes, plus side dishes, a really great mix and match system, substitutions, variations. And we are making her genius challah fritters for Hanukkah. This is like, let's call it the lazy woman and man's answer to the jelly donut. If you have a fear of yeast or you just want a shortcut in the kitchen, this is going to be your new favorite recipe. So Faith was showing us this additional extra, take it over the top tahini dipping sauce. Yes, because... Well, we're, you know, we're going to, you know, everyone, it, it just get, I really believe in levels of flavor and taste and texture. And I yes. think, th I just like to gild the lily, if you will. So <laughs> I have here, I have a half cup of tahini sauce here. And, and if you're not used to working with tahini sauce, take it out of the fridge. If you put it in there, um, yeah. I go through a lot of tahini sauce. Um, so I don't keep it in the fridge. But if you don't, you know, take it out of the fridge, let it get to room temperature, and then stir it before you measure it out. And um, maybe um, do a little oil spray on your measuring cup so it comes out of the measuring cup cleanly. Smart. Smart. So we, we're going to add um, two tablespoons of lemon juice. Great. I have an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. Good. And then in case anyone's freaking out, like tahini or as we call it, tahina and khala, or like with fritters, Faith is making a special secret sweet tahini sauce. So keep going, right. Faith. Right. Yes. There's no garlic <laughs> in this one. And, and then we're going to add about a quarter cup of cold water. And then we're going to stir. And if you're not used to using tahini sauce, it can be kind of scary because it kind of looks, I don't know, um, it kind of looks stringy and it gets it, it gets kind of seizes up sometimes seizes so you, up a little yes. bit so what you want to do is you want to um just keep going till it's smooth if it's a little too thick you know uh -huh. add a little more water and then when you it's about tahini and ceylon are my favorite ingredients faith and you should know oh, i use them too. in cooking and baking and breakfast lunch and dinner i use it in my shakes in my yogurts in my brisket and in my desserts so you're like speaking my language right now i, I have a new recipe on um foodandwine.com for a rugula that is got um the dough has like cardamom and cinnamon in it and then the inside is is painted with date syrup or salam and then it's got wow. dates and nuts in the filling and then it has a tahini glaze <laughs> so i should well, call that jamie geller what regula if so you would rename it i would be forever honored but food and wine that is the coolest thing faith and that sounds divine so let me so when i get this to about where i want it i'm going to put in three to four tablespoons of agave um you could keep it you could use honey if you want also i just developed the recipe with agave and this sauce is so versatile i love it over my bundt cake instead of doing the black and white glazes i oh. use it as an ice cream topping um yes i use it i use it's you know I, it's the basis for a lot so once you have it the texture you want and you've got everything all mixed in you could see you want it to be a little bit pourable then okay. you put it put it in your serving bowl Oh, that's great. It's still a little and, bit of thickness, but definitely pourable. Uh, yeah, and then you take your Ceylon, which is date syrup. Now you can get Ceylon in Middle Eastern markets, near East markets, some specialty stores. Um, mm -hmm. In America, Trader Joe's has a version. You can get it online. Um, on Amazon? I'm sure, on Amazon. 
you can yeah. get it from there's local producers in America for it. So it's 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 available. Your store might not have it, but it's out there. And if you can't get it, you could just skip this. It's it's gilding the gilded lily here, and we're just going to do a, a a little bit of there. And I we'll, love it. And we'll pull it through to marbleize it. See, then, I have a I have a Ceylon that's made in Israel um, under my brand name that sold on Amazon. So if anybody wants it, they can get oh, it. Oh, great. Yeah. Right. So that's right. So, and you can make it thicker. Or it, it, if you're going to leave it, it's going to seize up a little bit. You can make it thicker or looser, whatever you like as a great. dipping sauce. It should, it should be a little bit pourable. Otherwise, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't really mesh with the with fritter. So we're okay. now we're going to fry, we're getting going to get ready to fry the fritter. And what the first thing we need to do is stir the batter up. And I've added a little sugar to the batter too. Oh, nice. And you can see, can everybody see the batter now? Yeah, perfectly, um, perfectly. So you can see there's little pockets of jelly, but the, but the, and the, um, and this is nice and soggy. So I have preheated one half inch of uh, neutral oil. I like grapeseed oil. In okay. my I was going to ask, here. what is your preference? And then during the Hanukkah season, Faith, I was having a discussion with, I don't know if you know Shannon Sarna, she's the editor of The Nosher. I and do, I do. Yes, yeah, so we were like talking, uh, we were live the other day and we were saying, do you save your oil and reuse it? Like since we're doing latkes and donuts and how do you, what do you do? I save my oil and reuse it. What I do is I let it cool completely. I put it through a strainer into a glass jar, and then mm -hmm. I um, and I keep my oil I use for sweet like fritters separate from my oil yeah. I use for savories like latkes because that could be nasty. <laughs> yeah, and, that, and um, how long how, how long do you keep it for? How many times do you reuse it? This 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 batch is you know you have to add a little fresh oil to it also. I would say that this is this batch is um, third and probably last time. You know, it, it, if it stops being really clear and kind of golden, I think it's time. Or if it starts to pick up a smell. Um, uh -huh. But, you know, this is a big fry pan. If I had to use fresh oil every time, I'd be going through it by the gallons. So what we're making was we're making a fritter about, about one inch big. And we need to keep it, you need to really think about making sinker matzo balls rather than floaters. You really want to okay. handle it and compress it because otherwise it will spread. It will still be a delicious fritter, but it won't have this nice ball shape. Right. And, and um, I've lost track of time, so I don't know how much time we have. So no, I don't know how many we have to, time to fry. Let's make, I think we're ready to fry the ones that you've made. It's perfect. Okay. So, um, so we're going to put them in the fry pan and they don't need much time. Um, if you don't have a, um, a thermostat on a fry pan like I do here, you want to use an electric. You want to use um, you want to use a uh, deep fry thermometer to about 350, and, or you want to put when you put a little bit of batter in, it should be like a jacuzzi like this, not oh, like a jacuzzi. lazy stream. Okay, so we're gonna <laughs> I got it. Put our, we put our fritters people are watching. Jacuzzi. You should know from Scotland, from Orlando, Florida, from Michigan. I think we had somebody. I, I, I'm trying to remember all the cities, but thank you everyone for watching. Wishing everyone a happy Hanukkah from France. We have people watching. Oh, Natalie, so nice. Another Florida, Orlando in Florida, which is so cute. And Faith, these are like Vietnam. I knew I saw something cool out there. Faith, these are like. Yeah. To me, like donut holes or munchkins, like little jelly donut bites. Yes. And I'm just checking them and they still need another minute or two on the back side. Okay. Every fry pan, every fry pan is different. Every fry is like the moment I put this in, the temperature goes down. So I need to watch it. Do I want to raise the temperature a little bit? Do uh -huh. I need to add more while? Because you're going to have to do it in batches if you do a whole right. loaf. Um, make sure it comes back up to temperature before you okay. fry. I think of this holiday as my oil day. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, there's so much frying, there's so much oil um, that um, it's, uh, you know, it, uh, I'm, uh, I think um, Shannon posted something on Facebook yesterday, like, how do you get the smell of oil out of your hair? You know, 
Oh, no. Oh, first of all, you should, you know, if I'm wearing a wig. So it costs like a lot of money to wash this thing. So basically, I'm just going around smelling like this is my perfume of, of choice so, for, the, for the next week. Yeah. Um, so there's been about, uh, so I flipped them because they're nice and golden on this side. Let me hold one up so you can see. The nice perfect, and gold, beautiful gold angle. So, you know, I'm telling you two to three minutes and then another one to two on the other one, but it really, you have to use your eyes. So, you know, you don't want to make them too, too big because then the center won't, won't cook and you don't want to make them too small because they'll be all crust and none of that succulent jelly hollow filling. So I like to go succulent. for about an inch, about an inch. Okay. Remember to compress them down. So we're looking good here. We're looking and so good, Faith. You and the donuts. Oh, thank you, Jamie. So we're going to pull these out. <laughs> okay, great. And, and Faith, just whole... obviously we only made four because, you know, every, we just want people to get a sense of the recipe. Um, we know people like to see the whole recipe from start to finish. But when you would put the dough and make a lot of fritters, I always tell people to make sure not to overcrowd the pan. That's something that we're always right. trying to like shortcut. That's the one thing. Make sure there's space around each one so we get that nice crispy golden outside over like overcrowding. I feel like it starts to steam in, as opposed to crisp the latkes or the fritters. So, so here we have the, our, our samples, right? Beautiful. <laughs> and, Beautiful. And we'll plate we'll plate these for. And what we do is we put them on a nice plate once they've drained. And um, I like to use either parchment paper or uh, brown paper bag if I can get like a if you can still get them yes. or um, a rack <laughs> or a rack over a, um, a, a baking sheet to drain them um, mm -hmm. it just you know paper towels work but I like that better so yeah. now we have that now we have our powdered sugar Great. and the powdered now you could skip this step you could use cinnamon sugar oh that's a nice idea a too like I just this did a churros the other day Cinnamon sugar would be good with this. Now, I think that if you did the banana option and you mm -hmm. did cinnamon churro, or you cinnamon sugar, and I mm -hmm. think that you would have a real churro flavor here. And now we yes. have our tahini dipping sauce. And wow. it, voila. And voila, it, it's just, voila, Faith. It's a Hanukkah miracle. Um, yeah, so um, these are the holla fritters. And they, they're a long line of kind of fried foods especially um you know you talked about the jelly donut the sauvignon i mean that came to israel via the the polish immigrants and the labor unions made it popular and i think mm -hmm. there's a store in israel somewhere that sells two hundred and fifty thousand souvenirs in the month leading up to hanukkah so it is very very popular there <laughs> Yeah, we started eating them about a month before. That's how it goes. Every flavor is lined up in every bakery you're in. You know, Faith, as we're coming to a close, I want to thank you for sharing these, what I call, this is your Hanukkah miracle donut, everyone. If you're scared of yeast, if you don't love frying, if you don't like pachka ing in the kitchen, that's a real word for like, fuss, Yiddish word for fussing and overdoing it, or you don't have an inclination. I feel like anyone can make this. Um, no special equipment or ingredients, obviously just the frying aspect, but it was so simple and so easy. So if you're tuning in later, make sure to scroll back and watch from the from the top. Faith, before we go, um, I just want to throw up your book again. I love to support authors and especially Thank you. creative authors like you who are putting so much history down. You really took a look at the global Jewish kitchen with 52 Shabbat. So just a quick little bit, tell people what they can expect if they go ahead and purchase this book. Well, I believe every recipe tells a story, and um, and the stories I tell are the ones of the Jewish, uh, the Jewish migrations, the Jewish experience, the Jewish communities, and that reflects in my food. I have you know classic dishes like um, matzo ball soup and chopped liver or whatever, but my my briskets made with pomegranate molasses or Ethiopian spices. Um, mm -hmm. You know my matzo ball soup. Um, my, the one that's featured in the main part of the book, which features 52 Shabbat menus, which include make ahead steps, um, is uh, a Mexican Latin American with um, jalapeno and cilantro in the matzo ball and hominy or pozole in the soup and in Mexican flavors. And I, I don't make a regular falafel. I make a falafel pizza that I cover with fresh herbs and feta and drizzle wow. with jus and amba and tahini wow. sauce and things like that. 
Wow, Faith, it sounds so divine and so delicious. Just on this program alone, on this episode of Feed Your Soul, people were watching from all over the world. And I love that you also took a look at the Global Jewish Kitchen. Food brings us together. So I'm so thankful that the holiday and these challah fritters brought us together today from Jerusalem to uh, California, and that the book brings together Jewish cuisine from all over the world and teaches us a little bit about our history, our heritage, and our culture while we're making these delicious foods. So thank you, Faith, for, for this book. I think it's going to be an excellent addition to the Jewish Culinary Library. Thank you, Jamie. And thank you, everybody from everywhere for tuning in. Great. Okay, Faith, so I'm going to say bye to you. We're going to sign off. Happy Hanukkah. And stay warm and hope it's sunny today. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Enjoy the Jerusalem weather. Yes, thank you. Okay, guys, and to everyone watching, this was another episode of Feed Your Soul brought to you by Aish and Julish. Um, we don't do the show often. We do when we've got an amazing, great, exciting, interesting guest with basically a recipe that we think will change your life. And life-changing doesn't need to be 100 steps, slaving away in the kitchen. I always say slavery is like so yesterday. This, to me, is like the Hanukkah miracle, Hanukkah donut. This is like a jelly donut in a bite challah fritter that you can use stale challah, leftover challah. You just kind of shred it, tear it, mix it with the jelly. No piping bag, no piping and messy jelly at the end on a hot donut. I think this is fun for the kids. Just watch them all. Obviously, you handle the frying. That part needs to be supervised. But they can get their hands dirty here, and everyone can do everything. No special equipment, no mixing bowl, no proofing, no waiting. It's like donuts in minutes. So that's a Hanukkah miracle. You were seeing on the bottom all the ways that you can follow us and connect to us. Let us know what you'd like us to see cook next. And please uh, definitely check out Faith's new book, 52 Shabbats. I want to wish you all a happy, healthy Hanukkah filled with light and love and lots of latkes. Happy Hanukkah. <laughs>